like. So welcome to our big meeting. Uh, this is different than we normally do it. Uh, usually our big meeting is school-wide when everybody comes. Uh, but ultimately we thought it was more important for the new kids and the new families, people who have never done live before, to sort of be able to ask questions and get a feel for how it goes so you're not kind of learning as you go and, and feeling like behind the curve. So welcome everyone who made it into live program. Can we give a round of applause for all of our new <laughs> Actually, let me bring you guys up. So all the kids come up here real quick. Everyone who's new to live, come on in. We got one more coming in. All right, perfect. Uh, so we'll have all the new 101, 102, or advanced people, all the students who are showing up, kind of huddle around here and actually face out going this way because from now on, you guys are performers. All of this is yours. We no longer have to invite you up. This is your home and this is your stage. So you guys are now facing this way, performing to a crowd of the scariest crowd ever, your parents, okay? And we'll start here. What we're going to do is you guys are going to introduce yourself. Tell me your name, your age, and the instrument that you're playing, and we'll start here and work our way that way. I'm Quinn. I'm 10 years old, and I play piano. Perfect. I'm Luca. I'm 10 years old, and I play the drums. I'm John. I play, I'm eight, and I play piano. Go over here with the hat. I'm Brady, and I'm 12 years old, and I play the drums. I'm uh, Shy, I'm 14, and I play the guitar. I'm Kevin, I'm 15, and I play guitar. I'm Shane, I'm 14, and I play the drums. Awesome. Well, welcome our new Fall 2022 live team. Woo! Because now it's our turn. All the teachers asked me could we please do some public speaking today. So we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Phil. I'm the school director here at Los Rios. Uh, and we'll start here with Sarah. And uh, just go ahead and tell us your name and what you teach. Cool. Uh, my name is Sarah. I teach piano and voice here. I'm Caden. I teach drums and guitar. Hi, guys. My name is Gustavo. I teach piano, guitar, and bass. And a little bit of that. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Jono. I uh, teach guitar, vocals, and a bit of bass. I'm Johnny. I, I teach guitar, bass, piano, vocals, drums, just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rachel, and I teach piano and voice. Uh, my name is Justin. Uh, probably the longest lasting director here at the school at this point. Um, when the emails get too hard, I forward them to Phil. <laughs> um, <laughs> That being said, I teach guitar and bass primarily. I'm Kevin. I teach guitar, bass, and piano, as well as production. Hi, my name is Nico. I'm just friends with Phil, so I'm, I'm kind of yeah. new. He's my driver. Oh. <laughs> uh, and I teach uh, drums and guitar. Hello, I'm Anthony. I teach drums, piano, music production. Uh -huh. Let's give a round of applause for our teachers. These are the guys who do all the rules. All right, so now that you're in the live program, you guys are all new to the live program, uh, what I want to kind of do is explain to you the little bit of differences that's going to kind of be in your day-to-day -day here at Los Rios. It seems a little bit intimidating, but I promise you this is kind of where all the fun starts. It's kind of the whole point of being here, right? So you're not just here to learn your instrument and to sit down in a chair in front of a computer and get good at playing, you know, one Ozzy Osbourne lick over and over and over. What we're going to get you guys doing is learning how to be a comfortable performer, how to be a great performer, and how to play in a band and kind of speaking the language of music with other musicians, okay? So your day-to-day -day, uh, at your lesson, you'll still do your normal one-hour lesson, but it changes a little bit. Um, instead of just working on a skill or just coming in and learning a song that you want to learn, you're going to start getting assignments for your group, okay? So you're going to come in with your teacher, and the flow is going to be a little bit different. You will still absolutely be working on skills, be working on things you want to work on. It's not just going to be work, work, work on live stuff. But as we go through it, you're going to learn how to balance the workload. If I have six songs that I have to learn for my group and three months to do it, and I have to do this performance at the end of the year, okay? So one of the things that we're going to teach you is how to take on a big load of songs and 
learn all of those at once and sort of the flow of doing that, you know? Is it, do I just pick one song and learn it all the way through and that's my one that I do for the first week? Or do I learn a little bit of each song? Your teachers are gonna kind of guide you through that process as you go, okay? Throughout this entire time, what I want you guys to remember um, in terms of what you need to give to your teachers is communication back. If you're struggling with a part, if you're not sure, you let us know, hey, I'm not quite sure how to tackle this assignment. I think I'm falling behind. And we will make sure that the skills that you learn are gonna set you up for a really good season. It's a brand new sort of world that you guys are entering into with um, the stage stuff. By a quick show of hands, have any of you guys ever been in a band or performed on stage with anybody? All right, we got a couple, perfect. So it's a little bit different, right, than kind of just playing your instrument. And now that you're doing this like in our live group and there's sort of these expectations and these songs that you have to learn, it becomes a wildly fun experience. And as you go through year by year by year by year, you just get, not only do you get better at your instrument, but you're gonna get better at taking on these songs and learning them and feeling comfortable about it, okay? So your day-to-day -day will change in terms of your individual lesson, but your teacher is going to be there to guide you through it. What we want from you guys is to let us know how you're feeling in that. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Do you feel like you're struggling in an area? And we will make sure that we're setting up your lesson so that you guys are still getting the best experience here in your day-to-day. -day. Now, when it comes to your weekly rehearsal, that looks a little bit different too than I think a lot of people expect. So you have your one once a week on a Saturday. Um, I think everyone here is probably a Saturday rehearsal, yeah. Uh, you guys are gonna show up to rehearse with your group, okay? And we do that for the next three months. And again, the flow of that, the arc of that is gonna be a little bit of a, of a different experience for everyone. So when you show up to your rehearsal, you come, you guys are gonna meet everyone in your group today, and you're all gonna be best friends forever, I swear. Um, but when you show up, make sure you come, make sure that it's known that you're there, go say hi to your director, go say hi to your bandmates, you know. What we don't want is people just showing up and then like sitting in a chair over in the corner and waiting to be grabbed. It's kind of a hectic day, and it's kind of busy. So again, this is your environment. This is your world, this is your stage, and these are your practice rooms, okay? So, Walk in like you own the place, come in, set up, tune up, and get going, okay? Uh, even if you're a shy guy, you're gonna learn to not be. I'm a shy guy, okay? Uh, and through the process of playing music and playing in bands, I had to learn and got to learn what it feels like to sort of command my instrument, command my stage, and be a part of a band. So that's your guys' sort of homework or responsibility throughout the season, is even though you guys are the freshmen and you're the new ones, this is your band, okay? It's not our band that we're just like, hiring you guys to play or be giving you homework to do. This is your band and all of these directors up here are here to help you become the best musicians that you can be. So your day to day in your rehearsal as you show up, your director will get you guys going, you can tune up, plug in, and we're gonna kind of start shouting out songs. When we first start out, we don't expect you guys to know the songs, obviously. Okay, you're gonna have a bunch of assignments, so don't go home at the end of the day when you get your assignments and start cramming and think, oh my gosh, I have six songs to learn by next Saturday. Not how it works, okay? You, your individual instructor will kind of let you know, okay, we're gonna have to try to expect maybe just a little bit of this song, try to get the form down. A lot of the first rehearsals are just sort of listening through and getting acclimated with the song. Everyone is in the same boat as you guys, okay? Even the ones who've been doing this forever, they're just getting their assignments too. So everyone shows up not knowing these songs and we sit down and we listen to them, we start to get familiar with them. As the weeks go on, you'll learn them better and better and better, and then eventually your director will sort of take the training wheels off and you guys will start playing, okay? So don't freak out if at the beginning you feel like you don't know any of your parts. That's perfectly normal, okay? Um, so that's your day-to-day. -day. Now the arc of the whole season, okay, we have three months. Well, what are we doing for three months? What if I learn all of my parts within two weeks? Great, that'd be awesome. Not many people do, but that'd be wonderful. Or what if I feel like I'm not gonna learn them by the end of the three months? That's okay too. So one of the most important things I wanna kinda of communicate with you guys, um, and teachers feel free to chime in with this as well because you guys are the ones with them in the room doing all this stuff, is that your rehearsals, <coughs> bless you, your rehearsals are not the time for learning your songs, okay? So what your rehearsals are not is show up, okay, I'm gonna sit down and start learning the verse, learning the chorus, doing this. I'm gonna sit down with my individual part. There might be some room for that if we need to kind of like do something very specific, but you are learning your parts at home and with your instructor. So in your rehearsal, you are learning to play those parts with your band. You're learning the communication between band members. You're learning all sorts of things like stage presence. Where do I look? What do I do with my feet? What do I do with my hands when I'm not playing sort of thing? 
I know it seems kind of silly, but that is what goes on on the stage. So the way that we approach our rehearsals and how professionals approach rehearsals is you treat them like concerts, okay? One of the hardest lessons I had to learn is that the way you rehearse will be the way that you play at the show. You know, I had this impression when I first started playing of like, okay, rehearsals, I can sit down in my chair and kind of, you know, just play my parts and that's what it is. But the day of the show, I'm gonna go nuts. I'm gonna be doing David Lee Roth high kicks and backflips and spinning my guitar. I'm gonna be so good. And then, of course, the day of the show comes and all I know how to do is sit and play. I didn't practice being in a band. So that's gonna be more what you guys are doing in your rehearsals. You learn your parts at home, you learn your parts with your teacher. Your rehearsals are for the band stuff, okay? So it is gonna be kind of awkward and goofy at first. We're gonna do things like make you move around. Okay, make you look at each other, make you communicate with each other. Um, and you will learn to love it, and then the more you treat your rehearsals like a show, the more fun the show will be. I promise you that, okay? So if you ever get that in your head of like, well, I can kind of just play my part in rehearsal, and then I'll turn it on in the show, I'll be awesome. That's not really how it works. And all the directors will tell you, we've all had to kind of learn that through our musical career going forward, uh, that you do treat the rehearsals like shows. And that is what the directors are gonna be here to help you do. That and any of the students who have been doing this for a few years, you can lean on them too. Ask questions. Uh, you know, say I don't understand what's going on here. I'm not sure what to do here. No one will ever, ever make fun of you or give you any grief for asking a question during rehearsal, I promise. We love communication from you guys. The more lost you feel, the more we wanna hear about it, okay? Because Sometimes we don't know. We don't know if you guys are struggling with a certain part, don't want to be in a song, not sure what's going on. So talk to us as much as possible. We love the communication from you guys. So as the season goes on, again, the first sort of part of this is going to be just getting familiar with the songs, getting familiar with your band, okay? We want you guys to feel like a family and like a group that you can kind of lean on. And then as we sort of enter like second month, second phase of um, our rehearsals, that's when we're really working on the nuts and the bolts of the song. It's working on arrangements, getting your parts down. As we go on, we might make little modifications to your parts, whether that's changing the style of the song, changing what you play, even moving parts completely. So if that happens, again, don't freak out. That's perfectly normal. The directors are learning about you guys just as much as you're learning about the live program. Okay? So it's definitely not whatever you get at the very beginning of the year is it and that's it and there's no questions asked. We do a lot of rearranging and moving of stuff. And if you guys have any ideas for songs, we want to hear it in terms of making changes. Hey, maybe we should do this part twice as long. This, re this is really fun or this part really drags. And we will teach you the changes you have to make during a live performance that are different than what goes on on a record. Okay? And that is kind of a huge point of doing all of this and, and what is different about just sitting down with YouTube and playing a song and playing it live. You know, even the bands that you guys are learning, they do not play their songs live the same way that they did on a record, okay? What happens on a CD or what happens, on, I say CD, you guys don't even use CDs. What happens on YouTube, <laughs> Pandora? Okay, what you guys hear on records, that works for a recording, but if you go watch a live band, they're changing all of their parts to make it work live. And that's one of the bigger things that you guys will sort of learn the flow of as you do this is like when we make changes to stuff it's not because like you weren't playing it right or you couldn't handle it a lot of times just because that doesn't work in a live situation so it's a lot about being flexible and kind of communicating with that as well and so that's going to be the sort of the second part of your live season will be just wood shopping and just nailing down these songs and getting used to them hopefully by the, third, the last third of our season, you guys are pretty comfortable with your songs, and that's when you are really just learning how to have fun with these things, okay? Learning how to fine tune all the little bits and pieces. Um, did any of you guys get a chance to see the advanced groups in the last show at OC Tavern? I know it was a late night. Did you see a little bit of them? On, you came on Saturday, a little bit? So, you can go up, and I think we have some video of them. Go check our Instagram for it. You'll see a huge difference in sort of like the 101 and 102 groups and the advanced groups. And a lot of times it has nothing to do with their talent level. They're not even always playing harder songs. The main difference is they've learned how to have fun at a live show. And that is what you will start to learn to do, is learn how to have fun. And I know it sounds a little bit like, I don't know how to have fun, but having fun and playing instruments is a completely different experience. It's kind of life changing. So that will be the last third. Hopefully the last third isn't cramming because you forgot to learn your parts or you weren't kind of doing your homework. So, the one thing I do ask of you is communicate with us, and when you get your assignments and your parts, 
work on them at home and with your individual teacher, the more you do that, the more you get to focus on the learning how to have fun part at your rehearsal. Having said that, every year we get a song or a group or a person or a part uh, that does take the whole season to sort of nail down, down to the wire. And that's okay too. That's just another skill that we learn as musicians is doing the sort of last minute crunch to get something show ready. It's not ideal, but everyone has to do it. We're all guilty of it, even in our professional lives of you know learning a part right when you're walking up on stage, basically. Uh, so it does happen, and you will kind of learn how to do that. Um, all right, at this point, what I'd love to do, usually, like again, this is a little bit different. Usually we have our, uh, our students here, and we kind of call some advanced students up to give advice, but I want to go around with the teachers and have them all give you, I didn't warn you guys or do this, I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> One little piece of advice for our new students to make a successful first season here at Love Studios. Uh, we'll go the other way. We'll start with Anthony. He's a vet. Um, <clears throat> I guess kind of like a kind of a simple one. Just you know, show up with a positive attitude, open mind. If you don't like a song that you're on, um, don't be vocal about it. Oh, I hate this song. This song is terrible. It's happened in the past, and kind of brings the morale down a little bit. But just you know, play, learn new new styles you thought you'd never really learn. <clears throat> You know, just take it with an open mind and have fun, even with songs maybe you might not like too much. All right, Nico. Um, this is supposed to be fun. Um, it, yeah, you'll have homework, but you know, at the end of the day, you want to enjoy what you're doing. And uh, if you're not, then um, talk to us so that we can find a way to make that happen. So that, therefore, the, that's going to be. Uh, uh, you'll see that in the performance. You know, like you should be looking forward to having fun with the show. And having fun with the songs and, and, and so forth. Uh, absolutely staying positive, kind of like Anthony said, come with, come with a positive mindset and kind of like Phil said, if you ever feel like you need help as far as music, as far as someone else in the band, anything like that, please communicate either with one of the directors, your bandmates, everyone wants to help you. Everyone either wants to see you successful and thrive and kill it on the stage, and it's gonna be fun. That's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah just you can only just pick one. one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. <laughs> I, I got I gotta give you at least five. Okay. So I've been doing this a long time here. I've been here about eight years. I would say, parents, make sure you guys are on time with the kids. If you're in 101, that one hour goes very fast. It goes very fast. Every 101 group has about six to eight songs. So you can see how like that one hour can turn around pretty quick. Uh, students, if you're in 101 or 102, I don't think there's any advanced level here. There's a chance that you won't be in the rehearsal room the entire time. Use the time out here that you're not in the rehearsal room to go over parts. If you have phones, try to stay off them while you're here. This is a good time to utilize the resources of being here, playing your instrument. Treat it like another lesson in a way. Um, get to know your bandmates. Make eye contact with them. Because when you are connecting your parts with other students, it brings both your parts to life even more. And to piggyback off what Phil is saying is you get to see that in the advanced groups. The playing is absolutely second nature. They're playing better than most adults we know, but they're having fun because the playing has become second nature. And I could go on, but I'm Throw set it, it down the line. Yeah. Um, Phil probably said this three or four times, and these guys kind of mentioned it. Please ask questions. <coughs> mm -hmm. It's important for us. It helps us know you. It helps us know your learning style, um, and also what you're struggling with, and how we can come alongside of you and help you better. I remember being all y'all's age, and I didn't like asking questions because I didn't want to sound like I didn't know or be silly or whatever, but please ask us. We thrive off of that. And then have fun, because if you're having fun, you're going to work harder, and if you're working harder, you're going to get better quicker, okay? All right, next. Cool. Uh, I would say try not to compare yourself too much to the other students. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there are going to be other students at the school that are better at their instrument than you are at yours. And that can kind of bring your attitude down and make you feel bad about your own playing. But it's not about being better or worse than any other student. It's about improving yourself and getting better at your own instrument. Okay? Secondly, practice. 
okay? <laughs> Come to the rehearsals having practiced your songs so that you're a little bit better at them the next week. If you don't practice, you're not going to be any better, and it's, you're not going to see any improvement over the season. So, practice. So, I reckon you guys try really try to make sure that you listen to the other players in your band. And make, you know, there are going to be people that are better, but I want you guys to try to gain some sort of a, not a competition, but try to help each other get better. You know what I mean? It's quite good. You guys stole everything. We stole it. I have one. So, you guys are going to learn songs, so... There's easy parts on the songs and there's hard parts on the songs sometimes. So that hard part is what you have to tackle. Like like you said, that little part that it's kind of a little hard, repeat, repeat, repeat. You have to go through it a lot of times until it's gonna come out good. But don't practice the easy part for an hour. Okay, I know yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like just practice the, the hard parts are the where you have to focus your attention. That's good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, being in a band is like being on a football team. Uh, everyone relies on you, and you support your team like a quarterback. He needs the team needs him to throw the ball somewhere every uh, every game. It's like they need a wide receiver who's like a guitar player. It's like the quarterback needs someone to throw the ball to. Otherwise, the ball just go nowhere. But that means everyone shows up knowing their parts, knowing what they do, their role here, and I mean, your team relies on you. If the quarterback doesn't show up, then it's like, well, you know, now the team's just gonna fall apart. There's no plays that can happen. So drummers, you know, you're the quarterback. We need you to, to show up, learning your songs, be here, you know, I get it. There's always, you know, reasons why we can't, but you know, our team relies on us, the band relies on us. Same with guitar players, singers. It's like, uh, show up knowing our stuff and we'll build a strong team because come performance day, you know, we want to do well. We don't want to embarrass ourselves on stage. I know it's a, a saint being a little harsh right now, but we want to have fun on stage. And when we come prepared, then the game is like lots of fun when we're on stage and we get to rock out and a lot of our friends will probably be in the audience and they'll be like whoa look at Luca or Shane like, they're having so much fun it's like yeah because it was easy I showed up and I learned my part um, I mean it's going along with a lot of the same things I said already just getting to know the people around you makes it so much more fun because then when you're really treating it like a family it's like they are your family for a few months so Really just getting, making friends with everyone around you makes it so much more fun. Sometimes it's not a few months. Sometimes it's, you know, you show up at 10 years old and you leave at 18. Yeah. I've written probably seven college letters of rec so far. Yeah. And so it's a long journey. To together. Yeah. yeah. So you're starting a really fun journey right now. So, perfect little segue here. I want the parents especially, um, you know, 101ers, 102ers especially, usually to you guys, Schlepping the kids back and forth, right? Our advanced <laughs> kids, we get to yell at them when they don't show up because it's their fault that they, you know, got lost with Del Taco. But we know that every Saturday, you know, same time can be rough for some people, right? Things come up, you have family trips, you have vacations, things like that. So, uh, do you guys all know if you aren't going to show up, how to contact us, absent at losriosrockschool.com, and let us know with as much notice as possible that you're not gonna show. We get it that things come up, okay? But like Caden was saying, you know, one of the worst things, the hardest things for us directors to deal with is when someone, what we call no-shows, where we don't know that they're not gonna come and they just don't show up. Um, like Justin was saying, these hours, they fly by super quick. And so a lot of times these directors, they are scheduling what songs they're gonna do in an order that is most efficient. And so if the drummer for the first song just doesn't show up, and we wait 10 minutes for it, that's one whole song that we don't get to play in that rehearsal, okay? So it is like a quarterback, yeah. What was that email? Uh, absent at losritosrockschool.com. Like, yeah, let us know. Or you can also, if, if you're not, if it's something else, you can do live program at losritosrockschool.com for a general question, or if you need to let us know. Um, and that will blast out to all the live program uh, members. So if, and just to kind of give you an example of what happens when people don't show up. 
you know, the drummers especially, like Caden was saying, are the quarterback. Without a drummer, it is very hard to rehearse a song. Uh, and this comes up a lot, and I don't want anyone to fall into this mindset of this trap that kind of comes up. Of, like, I know my parts, I've nailed them, maybe I'm a month and a half in, I, I know my stuff. Like, my director, my teacher's already told me, I've nailed my parts. I could probably stop showing up to rehearsal. I don't have to go to the next one, like, I'm all good. This is a team, and this is a family. If you don't show up to the rehearsal, the other kids won't get to play that song the way that it's supposed to be played. And you don't want the day of the show to be the time where everyone's playing the song together for the first time, okay? So it very much is like any sort of sports practice. You know, if you are the star of the team, that doesn't mean you don't show up to practice. You're probably the most important person to show up to practice, okay? So we do ask that you try to make it to every rehearsal. If you can't, give us as much notice as possible. That does allow us to sort of pivot. We can say, okay, this person's not going to be here. That means we can really focus on these other songs. They need some work anyway, and we can still make a productive uh, practice. No shows are the absolute worst for us. It really like puts a you know a grind in our gears to getting things going, and then we get into a situation where we us and you we have to start playing catch up for the whole second half of that season, and just we just need to get people here rehearsing. So please let us know if you aren't going to show up. Um, and like Justin was saying, this is another big one. What happens like in these rehearsals? Am I going to be on every single song, or what happens in between them? You are not going to be on every single song. So I want to kind of run you through how this process works. Later on, at the end of this hour, you guys are going to meet with your 101s. Um, and if you're a 102er, you're going to meet at, um, what is it, one, 2 o'clock? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Okay, so 12. Um, for one or twoers, uh, one or oneers are going to be right after this. You guys all meet together, okay, and you go around and you suggest a song to play in your group. So everyone in the band gets to pick a song that you all play. Um, so we will also guide you through that. I mean, that in itself is a skill that you will learn as you move on through your years at Los Rios, that the song picking part is a skill to learn, okay? It's not just what's my favorite song right now or which one do I really want to learn part of. You will learn as the shows go on what songs work and which ones don't. So we will kind of help guide you through that. If you do have a suggestion, if you say, I really want to play this Rush song, and your teacher says, okay, pump the brakes, we're in a 101, <laughs> even if you know how to play that, even if you, like, I, I nailed this song, my teacher says I can do it, you have to keep in mind that you have other people in your band. You might not have a singer who can sing in that range. You might not have a guitarist who can play that well, right? So sometimes your song picks get um, denied in a way, uh, and it has nothing to do with a bad song choice postponed. or because of you. Postponed, yeah, postponed. Put it in our pocket for later. Sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So we also do ask that you guys have some backups, okay? Come up with like a list of two, three, four, however many songs you want so that we can go through them. And you might suggest a song by a band that you really love, and maybe that song doesn't work, and your band director might say, Oh, we can't do that one, but how about this other song by that band? So we do guys keep, ask that you guys keep an open mind about the song choices, because at the end of the day, we do want the whole set and the whole band to be the best possible. Um, so again, that is a sort of skill. So after you guys choose your songs and your band gets their set list, the teachers go through, the directors go through, and they do what's called staffing. They figure out who's going to play what part on what song. Okay? And there's lots of factors that go into this. It's actually a very complicated, kind of tricky process of basically like Jenga of moving people around and doing things. Okay? Um, so it has a lot to do with how many people are on that particular instrument in your group. By nature, if you're in a 101 and you have four drummers in your group and you're a drummer, you're probably going to get two assignments. Okay? Every drummer gets two songs. It's, yeah, question. How many songs do you get to suggest? You, we have one, you get one guaranteed pick. Uh, as you kind of get up 102 in advance, if we can make the sets longer, sometimes people get two picks, but everyone gets one pick guaranteed that the band gets to play. Great question. And then, so to follow up with that, have at least two picks ready. And the reason for that is we have about 110 live performers, so chances are song picks get doubled. And then we get to decide if your first pick goes to you or if somebody in a 102, for example, picked the song that you picked. The pecking order says we're going to give it to the 102 group. Yeah. Does that make sense? So that might be another reason why your song pick doesn't get chosen. You might have to come up with a backup. If another group yeah. has that same song, someone suggested it, we usually give it to the older groups because they have less time here to kind of do their thing. Um, so after we staff them, you get put on a couple of songs, you meet with your individual teacher, and they'll tell you, okay, you're on this song, you're on this song. 
one of the things, again, from a communication standpoint, as the season goes on that we need to hear from you is what is your workload looking like? We have a lot of different students with a lot of different learning styles, and we kind of, the more they communicate with us, the more we learn. Some students are really good at handling a small amount of incredibly difficult parts. So we'll give them like three songs, very hard parts, and they knock it out of the park. Other students, they want to be on every song, but easier parts, right? And those are both equally challenging to do throughout the season. But we need to know what kind of like student and learner and performer you are. So the first season, the first couple seasons are going to be a bit of a learning process for everybody on what works for you guys in terms of song assignments. If you do feel like I can handle more, like I'm already kind of bored, I've learned all my parts, again, let us know and say, hey, I know I'm on my two songs, I already got them, I kind of want to be on everything. We can start to explore some new options. Drummers, we'll start to teach you guys percussion parts, okay? A lot of these songs have tambourine, shaker, all sorts of hand percussion on there, and it makes a huge difference, and we love getting you guys on that stuff. Or you might even say, like, hey, I know I'm a guitarist, but, you know, I feel like I can handle more, and I want to be in every song. I know there's, like, a little keyboard part in this. Can I try sitting down at the keyboard and just plucking it out? Absolutely. We love that stuff. You want to try singing some backing vocals? Wonderful. By the same token, if you feel like you are drowning in song assignments and there's no way you're going to keep up, do not be shy or embarrassed to tell us that. If you're like, hey, I'm taking a look at this and I'm projecting forward, I think this might be a little too much, I'm not really having fun anymore, please let us know. We can always restaff your parts, give it to someone else. Chances are there's someone else in your group has, who has already said, hey, I want another song. Okay? And so we can start to reshuffle those things. Though, again, the worst thing for us is when we figure that out the day of the show. When someone says, yeah, that was just way too much and I didn't learn that last part. I'm like, oh, wow, that would have been good to know three weeks ago when we could have fixed that sort of thing. So again, communication, let us know. We need to learn your learning style just as much as you need to learn what it's like to be in a band. Um, so that's how the song picking process works. Um, again, we will help you through that. We will guide you through it. You will learn what works and what doesn't. Um, and I do encourage you guys, like, you know, if you get a chance, watch some of the videos of some of the advanced and 102 groups. If there's one thing they get good at as you move on here, it's learning how to pick a good set. Our advanced groups last season picked like amazing sets that were super fun, and they were not necessarily harder songs. Uh, so that is, again, a skill that you guys will sort of figure out as you go. Um, so when it comes to song assignments, everyone playing a team, and potentially missing stuff, uh, we do have some kind of rules that we have. If you no-show for three rehearsals, then we are going to have to start pulling you off of songs. And it's not like a punishment thing. It's not just like a slap on the wrist. It is because it's not fair to the other students. Okay, So if someone doesn't show up for three rehearsals and we didn't know about it and we're starting to get behind, we're going to start taking songs from that student and giving it to someone who does show up. Um, yeah, question. Sorry. Um, so everybody might know this, but so the rehearsals are on Saturday? Yes, Saturday. And what time? Uh, so the Jam 101s are from 11, 11 to 12. Okay. Jam 102s, 12 to 2. And then our advanced are 2 to 4. Okay. Yeah. And so and so if you do, and again, missing is fine. Yeah. 101 was 11 to 12? 11 to 12, yeah. yeah. If you do miss, like, are you something there? No. Oh. Um, if you do miss and we know about it, it is a lot easier to keep you guys up to speed. But no shows are rough, so we've had problems with this before. Three no-shows, and don't be surprised if you get an email that says, hey, we have to take you off this one song, we're going to give it to someone else. You know, Maybe if we can get caught back up, we can give it back to you, but it's just too risky, and honestly, it's unfair to the band when they don't have an important member showing up for three times in a row. Yeah, question. When's the show scheduled for? So our show right now, we haven't scheduled the exact date yet, but it's going to be probably mid-January. Uh, yeah, we try to get it scheduled as early as possible. That's a whole other can of worms that comes up every year of like, you know, we need to know the date. So, um, no, we're going to do it at an outside venue. So last time was OC Tavern. Um, and so one of the things that we're trying to figure out now is usually we do it at the OC Tavern, the House of Blues in Anaheim, or at the Coach House. Uh, but we're kind of exploring new venues to see kind of closer ones um, that might be good. Yeah. When's the first First rehearsal is, I have it written down. Not, no, it wouldn't it'd be after the, so the 16th? Yeah. Or 15. No, 15th, yeah. Yeah, so no rehearsal next week. We're still going to be staffing songs and getting them ready, so your first rehearsal will be the 15th. And then it is every Saturday, holiday weekends and stuff like that, we will send out emails and say, hey, no rehearsal. So please check your emails. Check, check, check your emails. This happens every season with someone. I know we send out a lot of emails, 
but we do put important stuff in there, like there is no rehearsal this weekend. And people show up and they get very cranky. Okay. Um, so uh, again, with just the the no show thing. Um, just don't be personally hurt if we have to take you off a song because you haven't been showing. There is a chance to redeem yourself back into it if you can get caught back up. It's not that we're mad at you. It's not that we're punishing you. It's just so that we have a good show at the end of the year. Um, and we get it. Stuff comes up. Now, what happens if we announce the show date and you're going to be in Mexico that weekend, right? Again, it happens. It's a bummer. Uh, and we try to pick dates that are going to give us the most amount of families and students available, but like Justin said, we have 115 live group members, it is impossible. Inevitably, every season, we do a show and someone says, we can't make that show. Um, so when that happens, it is a bummer. You are absolutely welcome to still come to rehearsal, get the experience, but we are gonna have to take your parts and obviously give them to someone else to learn for the show. But if you wanna kind of still come, hang out, jam along with people, get the experience and keep with your band, absolutely. Or if you want, did you have a question? Or are you just stretching? No, no. Just okay. Or what? A lot of times, what happens in there, and this kind of brings me to my next point. What if I want to audition up to the next level? I'm doing 101 here. What if I want to do 102 next season? Okay. Uh, or is that expected of me to go up after the next season? The answer is no. It is not expected. Some people, and actually a lot of us will say it's a good idea to stay in 101 or in 102 at your level until you are absolutely sure you want to go up. The longer you kind of stay in it and get used to it and start to feel like a veteran and not a newbie, you learn a lot of new skills. But your directors will kind of tell you, hey, I think you might be ready to move up. Or you can tell us, I think I'm ready to move up. So if that happens, this is one of the harder things to juggle when you're in live season, is you do have to audition up. So not only do you have to learn your parts and your songs, you have to still come to rehearsal every weekend, but now you gotta learn the audition stuff for next season, okay? And the workload can get pretty gnarly pretty quick. So, we do want you guys to start thinking about that pretty early on if you want to audition up. We have a point in our season we call the midterms, okay, which we'll be doing some recordings of everyone to see where shows are going. And that's a pivotal point. Uh, it's about halfway through our rehearsal, our three months. Um, and that is when we are going to start asking you guys, when we want you to tell us, are we going to try to audition up to the next level for next season? Uh, because we want to give everyone ample time to check out the audition material, learn it, make their videos, and submit it. Our submission date for the next season is going to be two weeks before the show, okay? So again, inevitably, we get people who one week before the show say, hey, I think I want to audition up to 102 next season. We're like, all right, well, you should have told us that a month and a half ago, and then you should have submitted your videos last week, okay? And it can become very stressful. We don't want anyone to kind of feel like they're in a season that they don't want to do. So start thinking about that early. Do I want to hang out in 101? Am I having fun? If you're having fun and doing great, stay in 101. Stay in 102. We want you guys to kind of get the most out of those experiences. But if you do feel ready, start communicating that with your director and with your teacher as early as possible so that we have the best shot at getting a good rehearsal, uh, audition video in for the next season. Um, other than that, um, all I want to say to you guys is that the show, uh, for those of you who have ever done a show, great. For those of you who haven't, it is not like a final in a class, okay? It's not a recital. It's not, did you do your homework? It is a celebration, and it's fun, okay? So that is the thing I want you to remember going through the season. The more work you put into it now, okay, kind of like Gustavo was saying, you know, learn those hard parts, study those guys, pound through them, come prepared to your, to your rehearsals. The more work you put in early, the funner the show is, I promise you, okay? And it is gonna be fun. Your friends and your family and everyone's gonna be there. And you know, the smiles on the faces, is the, that's the payoff for us. We love watching you guys up on stage just having the time of your life. Uh, so with that, are there any questions from you guys about the flow of the season, what to expect, any sort of, you know, administrative things that you need to know about from families or students. Any concerns? Yeah. I'll be a small point, but are, um, are we doing the understudy thing still? Uh, yes, assistant? thanks, I forgot to write that on. Um, so we do have this, um, we kind of introduced this last season, something called the understudy program. So with your songs that you're learning and your parts, those are your parts, okay? You're in the band, you're playing those, but we're also gonna start giving you understudy parts, which means parts that you're gonna learn that aren't the ones you're gonna play during the show. It's your bandmates part. So you might learn, if you're lead guitar on a song, you might also start to learn the rhythm guitar part, just in case. Uh, and reasons for this might be, if that rhythm guitarist doesn't show up to a rehearsal, 
We're not dead in the water. It might be a song where you need that rhythm guitar to even get this thing off the ground. And if the lead guitarist learned it, awesome. They can play that one. Uh, you, this is a great opportunity. If you want to explore a new instrument, you can say like, hey, I know I'm a guitarist, but I really want to try playing bass at some point. We can put you as an understudy on a bass, okay? And you can start learning bass parts to your, to your group songs. And if the opportunity comes up in your rehearsal to hop on it and you know it, you get to plug in and now you're a bass player official. Okay? So you will get more assignments than you will play during the show. Um, but again, those are sort of like bonus parts. If you're, your parts are going to be the ones to focus on and then we're going to start kind of getting people good enough to play the other ones just in case someone doesn't show up. Or again, God forbid, this does happen. In the middle of a, you know, right before a show, someone says, oh my gosh, I can't make it to the show. And we have four parts that need to be staffed. Well, if the people in that group, the understudies learned them, then we're all good. They can hop up, up on stage, and we didn't skip a beat, okay? So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, any other questions, concerns, before we, yeah? So, like, for keys, if they're learning a main part, and there's, like, a particular sound that is for that song or a tone for that song, is it, are they going to practice on their own for keys for, for live, or are they going to do use, like, the stuff that you guys have here? Like gear-wise and things yeah, like that? Yeah, like for gear, like if, if it's the song has a particular, uh, like some, as an organ part or a hand part, if it's like, okay, well that's, that's the sound of that song, mm -hmm. are they going to learn it on your stuff or are they going to learn it on, do they have their own stuff? Or no, it, you'll do it on our stuff. That's a great question. So one of the things we do, all of our rehearsal rooms and our stage, again, you know, we kind of preach that you will perform the way that you practice. We you bring your own guitars, for sure. Guitars, bring your own guitars, bring your own drumsticks. But we have you guys playing on the gear that you're going to use during the show, okay? Guitarists especially, uh, we have these pedal boards, um, these effects and stuff that you will learn just as much as you have to learn a part. You have to learn the gear, uh, how to properly use it. Because when you're up on stage, you can't look over and say like, hey, something's broken. Can someone come up here? So even though that happens every time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't want you guys to do that. Yeah. That can happen in a rehearsal. Yeah, that can happen in a rehearsal. But we want you guys like, again, this is your home. This isn't ours. So all this gear up on stage, we want you guys to feel the master and commander of that. So keyboard stuff, you will be learning how to access the patch that you need to use during the show so that when you sit down, you are the one doing that. Guitarists, you will learn what effects to turn on and off for your part. Um, because again, we do not want you know these old fat directors running up there and clicking buttons in the middle of the show and ruining your guys' Instagram feeds, okay? So it's not just the parts. Again, like, you know, I would argue that even the parts themselves are a, they're a much smaller part of being in a band, okay? You heard them all say it. It's a lot about family, communication, teamwork. Those are all things you're going to learn. And I'm a huge dork. I'm the biggest nerd here. And I love the gear stuff. So if you have, like, especially an interest in that, please communicate with that. I'd be like, hey, I'd love to learn how to set this up. And you can, we will show you how to plug everything in, and you can be the band dork, like I was always growing up. Um, but yeah, great question. You will be using our gear, uh, but you will be bringing your guitars, your basses, your drumsticks to all of your rehearsals. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, for, for logistics, for parents, a lot of times if we get on the same page, it could help out. Like, if they can't make it, I'll go, you know, I'll bring their son or daughter and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Or like purple? Uh, yeah, or just just for anything. So, uh, should we start a text message thread on the side, or should we go through the should we go through the messaging system of Los Rios? That's or, a great. I mean, we've you got, guys we've helped organize that. Yeah. Yeah. we've done that for hockey for his hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we're driving to live there, ranch picking up the kid and his in gear and taking him to. Anaheim. I think that's something we need to talk to Chris and Tyler about first. Okay. Yeah. Just to like, if it's just the best way to get the parents together. together. I would love it. I mean, that's like. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, makes me very happy to hear that you guys are thinking of that well, stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, usually we're like, you know, just don't murder each other in the parking lot. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that's a great idea. So actually, with that, with that note, you guys, Teacher Zone, raise your hand if you've been using it. Okay, log in, use Teacher Zone because we have a group chat. All of your groups are going to have a dedicated chat in Teacher Zone that all of the students and your director is going to be on. So important messages that need to reach the students immediately will go through teacher zone, okay? So if you're not paying attention to that, like there might be like, hey, we're moving rehearsal rooms today. You guys are gonna rehearse in the, usually the same spot every week. And if they move rehearsal rooms, they might throw it on the teacher zone chat. And we don't want you guys walking into an empty room aimlessly and then you know, walking around the parking lot with a guitar sort of thing. So please use teacher zone. If you have any trouble logging into it or accessing the chat, let us know immediately and we'll kind of go into there and figure it out. 
Yeah, question. Uh, on Saturday, when they meet, they're always somewhere here, or they could be any of them? It depends on what group you're in. So the, typically the, the groups meet in, uh, we have the red room here, the stage, and then we have two rehearsal rooms over in the other building. Um, and so when you meet with your groups today, we're gonna, you'll know which room to go to every single week. It'll be the same one. Shane, we do sh Shane will be over there. Okay. So we do every once in a while, we will switch it up. So what we do try to do every season, if scheduling permitting, is get a couple rehearsals, at least one, where you get out of your rehearsal room and up on the stage. Okay, so if that happens, that will be something that is communicated with you. Like, hey guys, don't meet in the orange room. Go to the stage today because we're doing a stage rehearsal or we're trading with them for one reason or another. So again, Teacher Zone is going to be where you guys see a lot of that stuff. So please uh, access that as much as possible. Um, any other questions? I think we're about to be ready to do some song picking. All right, well... Thank you guys so much. New Family is going to be really fun. You guys are going to meet with your 101 directors now. If you're one, Do we have any 102ers in here or is it all 101? One, okay, so you're going to be coming back in an hour. Feel free to hang out and have fun. Uh, but 101ers, your director is up here. Does everyone know who their director is? You guys get the email? Okay, sweet. So find your director. We'll let you know where to go. Um, I'm going to print out little things for everyone else coming in of where they're going to meet. And meet your band. Introduce yourself to everyone. This is going to be a really good season. So thank you guys for coming. And let's get to picking songs. All right, thank you, teachers.